Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So this video will be another part of this Vanadium Redox flow battery project. And in part 1 I make this cell, which is mostly 3D printed. So the end plate and also the reactor plate are 3D printed. And now I will actually share the files uh, that you can make these two plates by your own. So the STL files you will find on my Patreon. But don't worry, the files are free and also it's no need to be a member on the Patreon. You just go to my Patreon page and you download the files. And that's it. So the link to the files will be in the description of this video. And when you will print this kind of plates, then I recommend to use some resin printer. Because with the resin printer, you will get really nice and also smooth surface of these plates. Which is actually really important because here on the top of this plate you will put some gasket. And smoother is the surface of this plate, better will be also the ceiling. Really nice. I also recommend to use some ABAs like resin because the ABAs like resin is a little bit more stronger than standard resin and is also a little bit better with the chemical resistance. But on the other hand, if you need to use some FTM printer, then in this case I don't recommend to use some PLA plastic. Because most of the chemicals will dissolve the PLA and you will get the leakage everywhere. And in the end, when you have your plates, then you can go to watch the part one where I assemble this cell to get the idea how to make your cell out from these plates. And what is also really good to know is that these kind of plates you can also use in some different battery chemistry. Because all this here is related to this Vanadium Redox Flow battery project. For this reason, here I will use this Vanadium Redox Flow chemistry. And that's it. And now the second part of this video. I know that not many people have 3D printers at home and they are not able to print the plates like this one. For this reason I decided that I will show you how to make your cell without 3D printer. And for the start, do you remember this one? This is the gasket which I use in this cell. And the gasket is made from this neoprene rubber. And this neoprene rubber you can actually use for making some cell housing. Uh, so this one has the thickness of 1.5 mm. Uh, but if you want to make some cell housing out from this rubber, then the thickness needs to be a little bit more bigger. And then you will have something like this. So here I have this neoprene rubber with a thickness of 1 cm. And this one is really good to make some cell housing in any shape and also any size. So out from this one I already make two pieces of my housing. Like so. And because the entire cell housing is made from this rubber, there's actually no need to have some extra gasket. And because this battery will be some flow type, for this reason here, I have some holes for the pipes. So the size of the holes is 6 millimeters, which is the same size of this pipe and actually this pipe you put into this hole like so really nice cool and also around the pipe you need to seal with some silicon sealant that you will not get any leakage. Here I have some similar cell housing which I made several years ago. And here I seal with this standard silicon sealant. And I can say that this neoprene rubber and also this standard silicon sealant 
uh, withstand many, many, many tests without a problem. And now actually how you will make your cell. So first of all, you will start with some current collector. For the current collector, you can use whatever you want. Some copper, aluminium, titanium, graphol or graphite plate or something similar. In my case, I will use this graphite plate for my current collector. On this current collector, I will put this cell housing. Like so. And now here I have this empty space which I will fill with some conductive felt. The conductive felt which I will use will be this graphitic carbon felt. And this graffiti carbon felt and also this neoprene rubber you can really easily find on eBay. Like so. And now on the top you will put your membrane or separator. But make sure that the membrane I mean the size of the membrane is a little bit more smaller than the entire housing of the cell. See? Like so. And on the top you will put the second cell housing. With the pipes, of course. And again, this empty space you will fill with conductive felt and for the finish on the top you will put the another current collector and your cell is actually done but if you want to continue with uh, multiple cells in some bipolar formation then on this current collector Again, you will put the another cell housing with the pipes and you will continue with the same assemble which you do over here. So that's it and we see us in the next video. Bye.